All right, here we go. John Muir Trail, day six. Leaving Virginia Lake. This is stunning. You just gotta see this. This might be one of the most beautiful settings I've ever seen in my life. These mountains jetting in the background. This beautiful lake here. Oh, you got these other mountains. And check this out. I won't go too fast. We got the sun coming over here on that. This is just absolutely beautiful today. Today I anticipate doing about 14 miles or so, leaving Virginia Lake, going to Vermilion Valley. I don't know if it's resort or ranch, so, but I'll be heading there and let's see what we find on the trail today. Here's my John Muir Trail day six update. Day six, I started the morning at Virginia Lake. Virginia Lake is stunning. It is absolutely beautiful. I'm pretty sure I stayed more on the north side of the lake. As I slept there the night before, the sun went down pretty quick. So I was on the side of the lake where it was shady. So that would mean I was on the west side of the lake, kind of the northwest corner there. But I woke up in the morning and you could see the sun coming up. The reflection of the mountains was on the lake. In the distance you had Ansel Adams Wilderness. It was just absolutely phenomenal to see. I got going in the morning and decided I had to fish. And so I took maybe 20 minutes to fish around the lake as I continued moving on from there. I'm trying to think of anything that really stands out. You kind of go over this little pass and then you came down and I just did switchback after switchback going down towards like Tully Hole and Fish Camp. And I was walking along this like kind of creek, river, small river, and I thought I have to fish this. And so fished a little, caught two fish. I mean, jumpers and fighters. The fishing in there was beautiful. If I was to come back and do this trail again and do it in 21 days instead of 14, I would stay at Tully Hole. I would stay at Fish Camp, uh, somewhere in that area. And I would just fish that river for an afternoon. I had so much fun. It was along that section of the trail that I met my two friends, Rob and Jen from Alaska. And Rob actually helped me. I've had some blisters on my feet and Rob gave me some Luco tape so we stopped at the fish camp bridge and I popped those blisters and put Luco tape on them as I reflect on yesterday it was a very hard day for me with my feet I mean discouraging hard like thought about quitting several times hard and so that was something that I really had to process yesterday just hiking alone and what was really cool is as the day went on I bumped into a guy named Gabriel and Gabriel and I uh, started hiking. We could hike almost at the same pace. I'm faster at the uphills. He's faster at the downhills. And a big thing for the downhills is I had like six hot spots. I, uh, two of my toes, each one on the right, one on the left, uh, have blisters. Both of my heels have blisters. I got a couple other hot spots going on. And so yesterday was not my greatest day mentally. And I'm sharing this right now so that I remember it. I'm sure that when I get home and look back on the John Muir Trail, I'm sure it's gonna be phenomenal. I don't think I'm gonna think about these 18 mile days or 16 mile days with blisters. I think I'm gonna remember the beautiful pictures and the people that I met and the fish that I caught. And so I do wanna make sure that I sprinkle in 
as much reality on this trail so that I can remember it for future use or so that you can use this uh, as being helpful. After we did Silver Pass, I think Silver Pass was just over 11,000 feet. And coming down Silver Pass, stopped, had a great little spot for lunch. This is where Gabriel and I synced up again. We met another guy named Eric who's doing the PCT had lunch with this girl Bridget and it was just really good to have conversation with people. Uh, for those of you who know me personally, I am a huge extrovert and so doing this trail solo has really been a challenge for me. It's really made me process and think of things. I was talking with some guys about it and when you're doing a trail like this, you don't solo, you don't have someone to ask, is this a good idea? And I might have shared this already but these are thoughts that continue to process in my mind coming down silver pass into the valley i came down to thomas edison lake and it's just stunning it's beautiful if you're gonna watch all of these if i re-watch these i'm probably gonna get sick of myself saying how beautiful it was but there's just so much to see in here different lakes and streams and rivers and walking through meadows and flowers and seeing these rock faces that have been smoothed out i'm just constantly in awe of what god has done here yesterday i got to the ferry pickup at about 4 30. the ferry picks you up uh, at the end of edison lake and it will bring you over to vermilion valley resort so getting on that ferry just felt like such a huge win. Um, not a huge accomplishment, but just a win. A win to be able to get on that ferry, to jump onto that, <clears throat> and to get over here where I could have some real food, connect with people. Uh, when you show up, if you take the ferry and you show up at Vermilion Valley Resort, VVR, they offer you a free drink when you get here. And I took that Gatorade so quickly. It was so good. Oh, look, you can see my tent over in the background. Uh, and so I'm camping here. You can camp here for free as long as you want. They just say you gotta be out by September. Uh, my goal, my ultimate goal always was to be here for two nights and have a rest day. In my next video, I'll try to talk about the rest day, see what that's like. But I showed up on Wednesday night and that's barbecue night. And I ordered a plate of, that came with tri-tip and chicken and beans and mashed potatoes and coleslaw. It was just so good. It was uh, so good on several reasons. One, to eat a meal that I didn't cook. Two, to not have to bring out my stove and cook a meal. And three, to have like a real meal that wasn't you know, Chili Mac, no, no offense, Mountain House, you know, no, no Chili Mac, no ramen and quinoa and some of these other things that I've been eating. And so it was just really cool to, to sit. It's, it's even great to sit at a table and have a meal. And I went and ordered a Sprite. And then last night, what I needed to do was I needed to work on my feet. And Rob, who I mentioned earlier, who's from Alaska, had worked as a paramedic, I think for maybe two decades. And so I was able to show him my blisters and get advice what to do. And I got a pin and popped the blisters and you know, we don't have to go into all that. But I think um, just having you know someone to talk to about that and, and what to do and that foot care was really, really good. I stayed up later than I have. Last night, I don't think I got into bed till 9.30 and got up once in the middle of the night and the stars are just beautiful out here. I am so loving that. Now, one of the things that I didn't expect um, on this trip, and let me make a mention, I think this may be the best my hair has looked because I took a shower here and you can take a shower and do your laundry. And that was just so great because I've been wearing the same clothes for the last almost week. So six days of hiking, same six clothes that I'm hiking in. As I move forward, that'll be the same thing as I leave here and aim for Mount Whitney uh, as, I, I wanna say Mount Whitney's my ultimate goal, but my ultimate goal is to make it home to my family. And so I wanna get to Mount Whitney. That is a huge goal of this trip. But just even reflecting on last night and you know having a hard time yesterday with my feet and now moving into or coming into Vermilion Valley Ranch, and just being able to rest, to care for my feet, to talk to some other people has been really cool. 
something too if you want to stick around for this part is word has gotten out that I'm a pastor on the trail and I've had some really cool conversations with people about Jesus one of the things that has sticking that is sticking in my mind is people are curious about God people are interested in God and so I'm having a lot of these conversations and realizing that people have a huge interest in God I think we just need more Christians to share their faith with their friends I think we need more Christians to be bold and just that when people around them are ready to have conversations. One of the things I'm learning on this trail is people are here, they're looking for something. People are in a life transition, people are trying to figure things out, people want to accomplish a goal, whatever it may be. And even for me, this has been a, a spiritual pilgrimage where I want to connect with God on this trail. And that's happening. I'm having some great conversations with God. I'm speaking scripture, I'm singing songs. It's been really, really cool. And so, yeah, there's my thoughts on John Muir Trail, day six. I'm looking forward to looking back on these one day. And I don't know, I might even need to do some amendums and say, okay, hey, I've back in, been back in town for three weeks and uh, this is what it's actually like. So we'll see how all that works, but hope this is uh, helpful for whoever watches it.